Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I am a little feeling a little different today because I am using a different camera than I normally do. Normally I just use my phone to film uh, and today I'm actually using my GoPro which I bought I don't know, like a year and a half ago, and I just never use it because I'm so much more comfortable on my phone. But I realized that I, you know, I've been wanting my phone. I want my girls to be able to get a hold of me if, um, if they need to, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm making a point to start filming with this GoPro. But I'm very, I'm just not used to it. First of all, the lens is off to the right, and with the phone, it used to be off to the left. So I keep looking over here, but then I realize I gotta look. <laughs> Right here. So it, the videography is a little bit off today. That's why is because I'm using uh, this new camera. So anyway, earlier today, you saw the video probably yesterday, I was planting up my flower field. I got, see, I'm doing it again. I'm looking over to the left. I got um, a lot of stuff planted in my flower field. I took a break and now I need to move on to some other stuff. And I don't know if you all can see behind me, but I have a ton of perennials. They got delivered from Walters Gardens a couple days ago, and they are gorgeous. They are so beautiful. That company just did, does the best job on their plants. They do such a wonderful job on perennials, and I have a lot of fun stuff sitting out here ready to be planted, and I'm, I'm getting anxious to plant them, but I wanted to give you all a little like haul, plant haul, so that you can see what I have before I start spreading it all through my garden. So let me run through real quick all the plants that I got from Walter's Gardens. Okay, look at all these perennials. They look so good. They, I mean, I can't even tell you all. Sometimes, you know, you get plants delivered and you can tell that they're still, they're still rooting in and they're still growing and that's fine. You just have to give them some time. But I swear, whenever I get plants from Walter's Gardens, they are, they are so pretty. Look at these. I mean, look at these. It's incredible. So, okay, so some of these are 2025s, meaning they're not available this year. They're just what's called a professional release, meaning they just give them to professional garden people. I guess you could call me a professional garden person, but they basically give it up, give it to us to try. So there's a couple of these that are not available for you to get this year. And I'll try and tell you each one. And if I miss it, I'll put it on the screen. So just a heads up, some of these are 2025s and you can't get your hands on them yet. So let me get started. I'm gonna skip over these. I'll tell you about these in another video. And these I got from Fanula's uh, Cottage Gardens of Petaluma, which is very exciting. I'm so excited about those. But first here for the perennials from Walters, this is Lemon Jade Sedum. We all know this plant or we should know this plant and love this plant. So I have a lot of back and black sedum in my garden already, but I don't have any Lemon Jade Sedum and I love of that chartreuse green color. So I'm really excited to get this. It gets 18 inches tall and I think 28 inches wide. It's Hardy Zones three, for, 3 through 9, and it's just going to do so well in my garden. These, almost all of these are going into my Best for the West garden. And so the goal with that garden is to show what plants do really, really well in my hot, dry, western zone 9 garden. Um, so for you all that have that those similar uh, conditions, you can you can kind of mimic this or at least get a good idea of what's going on. This one right here, I already have in my front in my Best for the West Garden. It's called Cat's Pajamas Nepeta, and I just love it. It's just so good. It gets 14 inches tall. How wide does it get? It gets pretty wide. 20 inches wide. Hardy zones 3 through 8. I'm zone 9B, and it's doing fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So uh, Nepeta does really, really well for us. It's definitely a... Um, uh, they call it valley-wise. So I live in the valley of California, and plants that do well for me, for us here, they call it valley-wise. There's a whole list of plants, and actually Nepeta is one of those valley-wise valley, valley -wise plants. Uh, Russian sage is a valley-wise plant, Penstemon is a valley-wise plant, and Sedum is a valley-wise plant. So you can kind of see... Um, 
kind of where, where I get a lot of my ideas for the best for the West Garden. Another Valley Wise plant is lavender, and this is actually what I want to plant today because lavender is very, very easy to grow once you get it in the ground and once you get it rooted out. It becomes a um, drought tolerant plant that doesn't need a lot of water, but when it's in its pot, for me at least, it is finicky. Like you can easily overwater it and easily underwater it. So I want to get these in the ground today. This is called Sweet Romance Lavender, 18 inches tall and 18 inches wide, hardy in zones five through nine. It smells so good. It smells so good. I love lavender. I have so much lavender in my garden and I want even more. So I got a ton of those. And then I do have some cardoon seeds that I've been sowing and they're about ready to get planted out. They're still pretty small, but they're ready. And uh, so so I want to get those in the ground and I'm going to mix the cardoons with the lavender and I think it's going to be beautiful. Another one that I already have in my best for the West Garden is the denim and lace Russian sage. I'm trying not to touch it because I get a rash whenever I touch Russian sage. It's so funny. I'm like, I can touch any other plant, no problem. The milky white sap um, in Euphorbia or in Star Jasmine, I have no problem with. But then when I, when I touch this plant, I get a little rash. So I'm going to try not to touch it, but it's a beautiful plant. I think it smells so good. And the color is just it's just so beautiful. So again, I already have a ton of these in my Best for the West garden, and I had to have more because I love them. So excited about this one. It gets 32 inches tall, 38 inches wide, hardy zones four through nine. Then these are new. These I don't think, these are 2025, so I'm pretty sure. Um, this is called Kaleidoscope or orchid flash. And so these are an ice plant and I'm really happy to get my hands on these. This is a new one for um, Walter's Gardens because these do really, really well in my area and they bloom so early. And when they bloom, it's like a sea of this electric purple color. It's beautiful. They have a couple different colors. I only got two. I got Orchid Flash and then I got Pink Radiance. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and so I'm going to kind of put them all around. This is what you would call a xeriscape plant. And what that means is once it gets established, you don't even have to water it. Like you don't even have to take care of it at all once you get it established. So I am going to hook these up to drip for this first year, but then eventually I'll probably take them off drip um, and they'll be fine. I actually see these growing in people's ditches and stuff like that, like in the front of their houses. And they're just so beautiful when they do bloom. So these are babies. They will take some time to kind of grow, uh, grow in and settle in. But once they do, they're going to be a really, really beautiful color pretty early on in the season for us. Next one I've actually never grown before. It's called Heliopsis. It's a false sunflower. You might have heard of Tuscan Gold. Um, I think that that's a previous variety from Proven Winners. This one is new. Again, this is a 2025, so you have to wait till next year to get this one. This is called a Touch of Blush. And you can see why it's called a Touch of Blush, because look at these leaves. They, When the new ones come out, they have this little pink color to it, and otherwise they're variegated. It's so interesting. Every time I walk by here, I look at these plants. They just, they like want to be looked at. <laughs> so the the thing that's special about these Heliopsis is that they're shorter. They're um, like better controlled, but then they bloom basically all season long. And you don't have to deadhead them. You can, you know, like sometimes they kind of get a little ratty like that, but they will keep continuing on blooming. So very cool. Again, these are 2025s, but there are other varieties that you can get this year. This one. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. This one, I had so much jealousy for the people who got these last year. This one is, um, I think it's new this year. Maybe it was new last year. It's called Prairie Winds Niagara Falls. It's a panicum. It gets four feet tall and four feet wide. And I love the blue color on these plants, like a silvery blue. It's so, so gorgeous. There are a lot of, well, at least around here, around me, there's a lot of grasses that have that purple color. Not a lot with this with this silvery color. So I was so excited to get these. And then when they came looking like this, I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited 
excited about these and they will last for me. Obviously they're perennials, but oh, they're just, they're so beautiful and I'm so excited to have them. Next plant I've never heard of. It's a new one to me, which makes it that much more fun. This is called a stoke. Stokesia or Stokes Aster. Apparently it's native to North America. It does really well in heat and really well in humidity for those of you who live in the South. But look at that bloom. Look at that color. It's just so beautiful. So technically it's a wildflower that used to, that that does grow. I don't know exactly where, what part of, of the United States, but it does say it's a wildflower and it is just the neatest plant. It is just another one that, you know, like, like the fall sunflower, I walk by here and I'm just like staring at it. First, I was staring at this crazy foliage. It was so interesting. And then the buds come out and they just, they've got little hairs on them. It's the funniest thing. And then all of a sudden this one started blooming today and I was just so excited just in time for this video. But look at how many buds. Look at, I mean, it's just going to be incredible. So this one is supposed to bloom all season long. It does do better if you deadhead it. Um, it doesn't like wet feet, so make sure you put it in a somewhat dry area. It gets 26 inches tall and 36 inches wide. And I just, I cannot get over this flower. This like blue color. It's just, it's so pretty. Okay. So this one is a 2025. So I should have led with that. I'm, you can't get this one yet this year, but put it on your wish list because this one is really, really cool. This one is also a 2025. So this one is called Firefly Fuchsia Yarrow. And yarrow is just a staple. If you live in a hot area, you need to grow yarrow. It's just the, it's literally the easiest thing to grow. I have other yarrow up by the willow tree and I've completely completely ignored it and it's doing so good. It's doing so good. So this one has these beautiful pink blooms. Um, it's just starting. I have so many buds coming up, but it's really, really pretty. And I'm excited to get these colors uh, in my best for the West Garden. I'm going to put it pretty close to the front. Um, so it'll be kind of front and center to see it. All right. I'm sure you all can see the plant that I am absolutely obsessed with this year. And that is Nyphophia. And this one is called Hot and Cold, Pyromania Hot and Cold. And again, these weren't blooming just a couple days ago. They just opened up for me. This one is kind of like an ombre color. I mean, that's the best way that I can describe it. Isn't that interesting? And I just want more and more and more Nyphophia in my garden because I think it adds so much interest and so much like uniqueness, I guess is what I want to say, that I want to make sure that I have a lot of these to contrast with the, you know, the more the more, I don't want to say generic, that's not the right word, the regular type of blooms like this. I want to have a lot of these because I just think that they're so interesting. So I already have orange blaze in my front garden, and now I'm going to add in this hot and cold. And I want to get the green one in. I can't remember what the name is. And can somebody please make a pink one? Or maybe there are pink ones. I have to look it up, but I really, really want a pink Nyphophia in my garden. I'm going to have to research that because I wonder... I, I bet you there is one. Let me let me look into it. Okay, then coming back here into the shade, which actually feels really good. These are White Wands, Veronica, Magic Show White Wands. These were inspired by, um, I don't know if you all remember, I went to Napa to do a garden tour at my friend Julio's house. He has a very, just small house, but he has just made the front garden just the absolute most beautiful, beautiful garden in the entire world. I'll link it in the description down below. But he had a ton of white Veronica in his front garden and it just was magical. It was beautiful. So after I saw that, I had to have some, um, some white wands Veronica and then he mixed it with a lot of purples and it just, oh, it just looked beautiful. Okay. So speaking of beautiful, let me come here. So these are a whole bunch of hookra. I love hookra because they're so good in the shade and they're still so much color. And one of the things I'm just obsessed with is mixing them, like kind of mixing them all together. So it almost looks like a checkerboard pattern of different hookra. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for. I'm going to put these in my shade garden. 
And this is by far my favorite one. This is Wild Rose. I already have one in my shade garden right now, and they're just the color. It's like a flower. Honestly, it's like a flower. It gets 10 inches tall and 30 inches wide, so it forms a dense, ha dense habit of large, bright, rosy purple leaves with prominent, deep charcoal gray veining. Honestly, the only thing I see are the bright, rosy purple leaves. They're so beautiful, and they're so bright. This one is a new one. This one is for 20 25. Let me find a tag. Okay, I cannot find a tag on this one, but I know it's called Shadow Tag. Hoot Gorilla Shadow Tag. It has these beautiful green leaves with burgundy veining. Isn't that the prettiest thing? And I thought it brought in the Wild Rose Hookera over here. So this is a Hookerella. I think I said that. It does get beautiful pink flowers that are starting to come already. Very exciting. And I just thought it was so pretty with this. And then this one, this one's a 20 25 and this one's a 2025. And this one you can get. It's it's my favorite of the three still. Um, beautiful. This one is called Dressed Up Prom Dress and it's really, really interesting. It almost has like this frosty look to it. Um, it's just, it's the coolest thing. Again, it's starting to bloom and I, it, this one's a hookera. This one's a hookerella and this one's a hookera. Um, so, so pretty and just the combination of the three together are just the best. Okay, now now for this one. This one is super interesting. This one is a Tradescantia or a spiderwort. And I think that we've all, we've all seen this plant. We've all heard of this plant. This one is supposed to be especially special because it has bigger than average flowers and it's supposed to bloom more than normal spiderwort, which is the common name for it. So this one can take sun or shade, which those type of plants are my favorite because it doesn't matter where you put them. You can basically put them wherever. So basically I wanted a ton of these. You can see I got a ton of them because I wanted these to kind of fill in spots in my garden that, you know, maybe like, you know, there's some plants that are just stars of the show and then you need some other plants to kind of fill in around it. So this is what I'm going to use this one for. Um, this one is called Webmaster actually. Uh, so it's really interesting. I will let you all know how it goes in the garden. I'm going to put some of these in the shade and then also some of these in the sun um, and we'll, we'll just kind of see how it does. But you can see the blooms. They're beautiful and this one is actually supposed to bloom longer all season long. So really interested to try this one. Again, I apologize. It's a 2025. I didn't realize how many 2025s I picked out, but I picked out a lot. <laughs> this one right here I know is available in garden centers, probably a, in a lot of garden centers. This is called Magic Show Wizard of Oz. It's another Veronica, but instead of the white one, this is a deep violet blue, and it's so pretty. It's oh, I just can't wait to get this in the garden. It's full sun to part sun. I'm going to put this in more part sun in my garden. I think all Veronica in my area should go part sun. Um, so we'll see how this does, this one. I am so excited about this one. I talked to you guys about this one when I was in Zeeland, Michigan last year at Walter's Gardens, and I was just obsessed with this plant. This is called Cookies and Cream uh, Hibiscus. And so this is another summerific hibiscus, but this one is so interesting because it has these big, creamy white flowers put up against these dark leaves. Now, these leaves are just, like, this is just coming out of dormancy, um, and so you can't tell how dark these leaves are actually going to be because the new leaves are kind of green. You can see that. But when I saw the one that was growing in the trial garden at Walters, it was beautiful. So this was like my top choice. Like I had this number one on my list of plants that I wanted from, from Walters Gardens this year. So to get three of them, I'm really, really happy about that. And then finally, the last one I'll show you today, this is another 2025. This is called Bejeweled Pink Pearls. It's a penstemon. And here's one thing that I don't get about proven winners. I'll, you know, I, this, they rated this a three, four through eight, zones four through eight, but it's native to the Southwest. Penstemon is native to the Southwest. I don't think there's any zone eights in the Southwest. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in, um, what's that town in Arizona that's what, that snows? I can't remember at the top of my head, but like, like this this plant is going to do amazing for me. <laughs> Penstemon is going to do amazing for me. And this one is so pretty with the pink flowers. I just, oh, I had to have it. And so can you imagine the pink flowers with the purple spikes? Look, look at that. 
compare. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So again, this one is a new one. This one you should be able to get in garden centers next year, but you can watch this year and see how it does in my zone 9B garden. So those are my perennials. I want to get a lot of them in the ground very quickly, especially because I have all my annuals showing up on Friday. So the sooner I get these in the ground, the less watering I have to do and the happier they'll be, which is why I want to get that lavender, the sweet romance lavender in the ground ASAP this afternoon. It was one of the things that was definitely on my list. I wanted to do that. And then let me show you the cardoons that I grew from seed. I have some more that I grew from seed out there out front. But I have these right here. So here are my cardoons that I grew. I double, I did two seeds per cup and you can see almost all of them germinated both seeds. Um, I do not need that many cardoons, nor near that many cardoons. I also have 12 more out front. So, and actually the ones out front are looking a little bit better than these. I'm not sure why. Um, so anyways, I will get these planted. I'm gonna kind of, um, Put them all around, like, like mix the lavender and the cardoons all around each other right up where I have my artichoke plant in the front garden. And as I'm sitting here, I have to show you these. These like doubled in size. I planted these like two days ago. They're obviously happy to get out of their cans. By the way, look at my poppies. Aren't they beautiful? Poppies and sweet peas and some nasturtiums back there. But these pink poppies, oh my gosh. They're so pretty. They're like an antique pink. They're gorgeous. Doesn't that look so good? Oh man, I'm so excited about this. I I just cannot wait. I just cannot wait. So this was seven of the Sweet Romance Lavender and oh, I can just imagine this whole garden is gonna be planted up like within the next couple weeks. Man, I'm excited. All right, let me grab the Cardoon seedlings. I decided to go with these because I left them out here this morning and I figured I might as well and they look good. See, this is the other lavender that I have in my garden. It's so well established. This one, I didn't plant any of these. They were all here when we moved in. This one is called Spanish lavender. Um, it like de oro or something like that. I'll put it on the screen. Gosh, can you guys see how many bees are on there? Holy cow, they're everywhere. This one is super, super common for around here. This one is less common, but it's just as beautiful. I think this is more like an English type of lavender. Um, you know, it's kind of what most of us think about when we think of lavender, as opposed to that one over there. And I have three really, really big ones. But I can see they're already starting to get kind of woody. Lavender is a short-lived uh, perennial, so it only lives like, I don't know, like four years or so before it kind of gets starts getting yucky. So I am not worried about these. I can replace them very, very easily. But over here are my cardoons right there and right there. See, these look, these look awesome. So I'm gonna get those in between the Sweet Romance Lavender. Oh, and then these are perennials that I got in fall from Walters. These are the Pink Profusion Salvia. Look at how good they're looking. There's bees on them. They're showing color. Oh, they look good. They look so good. I've just fertilized them one time. I did one quick fertilization um, with like just an all-purpose fertilizer and they're happy. They're super, super happy.
Now that, that's dog pee damage. Darn it. Oy, that looks terrible. Poor things. Oh boy. Monty, you are so destructive. You're so cute, but you're so destructive. Can you see me? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't wait till I go and edit this video and it's just a complete mess. So I'm done. I think it looks really, really good and I'm so excited about it. I got 12 cardoon seedlings planted. I have a feeling they're gonna get big. That probably was a little overkill, but you know, I'm just excited. Oh! <laughs> this video is a comedy of errors. One of these bees just just ran into my eye. Oh God. So there's my espalier. There's my iceberg roses and coming this way. Right around the corner is where I am planting. And it looks good. So I have a bunch of alliums starting to come up. A couple of them are blooming over there. But I have these little cardoon seedlings in and I think they're going to be very happy. And then among that is the Sweet Romance Lavender from Walter's Gardens and it's just going to be beautiful. Oh, hello. Come here. Come here. Come here. Touch. Good touch. Good touch. Monty has a play date. Good touch. Good touch, Bubba, good touch. Okay, let me quickly show you guys the rest of this. So there's my current artichoke, and you can see I even have an artichoke forming right there, which is very exciting. And then I planted some of the cardoon seedlings right along the pathway. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. My goodness, oh my gosh, look at Wally. Look at Wally, he's so excited. <gasps> Is your friend here? Is your friend here? This is Courtney's Golden Doodle Wally. Oh my gosh, is your friend here? <laughs> okay, be nice, boys. Hey! Don't mess up my garden! <laughs> Hi! Get your energy out! Get your energy out! <laughs> I don't know if I said Wally is Courtney. Oh no, Wally! <laughs> Wally! Put your leg down! Wally! God! <laughs> Put your leg down! My goodness! Okay, let me quickly wrap this up because I have a feeling I'm going to be very distracted. Okay, so I have seven of the Sweet Romance Lavender right here. And then I... <laughs> This is the most chaotic video I've ever done. Then I have 12 of the, the Cardoon seedlings. So I've got one there. One there, one there, one there, two, a couple over there by the pomegranate, and then again, I have one, two, three, and they're gonna like spill over the walkway, which is exactly what I want. So, this looks good. I'm getting so excited for planting. It's go time. I think next week is gonna be planting week where I just plant a ton of stuff just all week long. So, be prepared for that. I apologize in advance. Hello, my dear. Were you at school today? Yeah. You were? Now, are you in preschool? Yeah. Oh my goodness, you're such a big girl. And who's your mommy, Courtney? Courtney. Courtney's your mommy, and who's your daddy? Owen. Good job. What's your favorite flower? Do you know? Poppy. <gasps> Poppies? You have good taste, my dear. Can you say, I hope you have a chance to get in your garden today? That's so good. Thank you. 